This is Professor Ariel Ortiz Lagarde de broadcasting from the International Bariatric Club Studios in San Diego, California. The theme of today's IBC Oxford University Hot Topics and Surgery exclusive event is the Lunar F Stapler under the microscope and will feature experts from the United States, Mexico, Brazil, India, Italy, Hong Kong, and Kuwait. We would like to thank Zoom Video Communications, YouTube, Facebook, and Bariatric News for setting up and promoting this regularly scheduled online academic series, which is supported by an educational grant from Medtronic. We would like to thank all our industry partners, starting by our platinum partners, Fulbright Medical, Medtronic, Ethicon Endosurgery, Easy Surge Medical, ConMed, Reach Surgical, David Medical, Lexington Medical, CMR Surgical, Panther Healthcare, MindRay, our gold partners, Bariatric Solutions, Stryker, Arthrix, Fit for Me, WL Gore, Carl Stortz, Advanced Medical Solutions, Liquid Band Fixate, our silver partners, USGI Medical, Mass Bariatric Technologies, Richard Wolf, our bronze partners, Boringer Laboratories, Intuitive Surgical, Baxter, Apollo Window Surgery. This is the 52nd webinar of the IBC Oxford Academic Series that has over 3 million unique downloads and is streaming live to millions of viewers from over 200 countries and territories through the IBC website, ibcclub.org, the IBC YouTube channel, via Facebook Live to the IBC Facebook page, the IBC Twitter feed, LinkedIn, and via IBC Instagram. This event is organized by Mr. Harris Kwaja, consultant bariatric surgeon, co-founder of the IBC, and director of IBC Global Education based at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital Imperial College London and Christchurch Oxford University. This event will be chaired by Professor Lisa Maria Pompa Gonzalez from Mexico and will be co-chaired by Dr. Omar Ganem from the United States and will be moderated by Professor Mario Musella from Italy and myself. The chair today is Professor Lisa Maria Pompa Gonzalez from Mexico. She's a bariatric and metabolic surgeon and CEO at Limarp International Center of Excellence for Obesity in Tijuana, Mexico. Also member of the Scientific Committee of the Mexican College of Bariatric and Metabolic Surgery. She's vice president of the American College of Surgeons nor uh, Occidental Chapter and professor of surgery at the Autonomous University of Baja California, Mexico. I will now pass it on to Professor Lisa Maria Pompa to present our co-chair and moderators. Well, good morning here in Mexico, maybe good evening in some in some other countries. Ariel, it's a pleasure to be here uh, in this um, uh, chapter in this webinar. Uh, I have the honor to introduce uh, our, our, our co-chair, Dr. Omar Ganem from the USA. Dr. Omar is an attending bariatric and minimally invasive surgery at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, USA. He's an associate fellowship MIS program director and associate director at general surgery residency program at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. I think Dr. Lisa got disconnected. Yes, it seems that uh, we got disconnected for a second, but yeah. let me present Dr. Oman Ganem from the USA. He's attending bariatric and minimally invasive surgery at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, USA, Associate Fellowship MIS Program Director and Associate Director of General Surgery at the Residency Program, Mayo Clinic, Rochester, and ASMBS Foundation Board Member, as well as Co-Chair at the ASMBS Communications Committee, SORT Editorial Board, and Leadership Roles in SAGES and the American Hernia Society. My friend, it's a pleasure and honor to have you with us today. Well, thank you. The, the pleasure is mine. Uh, first, it is amazing how 
you know, uh, industry and bariatric surgery and bariatric surgeons has come long way. And uh, with the help of our industry, we managed uh, more and more to get better and better outcomes. So I'm honored to be uh, in this uh, session today, uh, co-chairing it uh, with uh, Dr. Lisa. But first, I'm going to introduce both uh, moderators. I'm going to start uh, with a, uh, a giant in bariatric surgery, Professor Mayu Musella. Uh, I always say a dear friend of mine. Sometimes I quote you positively. Sometimes on the opposite, we're on opposite sides. But I always have the most ultimate respect for you. So uh, he's a professor of surgery at Federico II University Advanced Biomedical Sciences Department in Naples, Italy. Also, uh, allow me to introduce uh, uh, Professor Alier Ortez uh, Lagarde, uh, also a very close friend, and uh, we've been in the International Bariatric Club for a longer time. He's a co-founder of IBC, director of uh, IBC Communications, IBC TV uh, in San Diego, USA. He's also the medical director and founder of the Obesity Control Center, Tijuana, Mexico. Uh, Back to uh, Professor Lisa to uh, uh, take it from there. Uh, back to you, Professor Gonzalez. Thank you. Uh, I have the pleasure to introduce I think we lost her again. Yeah, that, I'll, I'll, I'll proceed till Professor uh, Gonzalez uh, is back. I, I'll, I'm just going to introduce uh, Dr. Mohit Bandari. He's the director of uh, Mohawk Bariatrics and Robotics uh, in Indore, India. He's also the associate professor, Department of Surgical Gastroenterology uh, in Medical College and Postgraduate Institute in Indore, India. Uh, Dr. Mohit has also have been publishing a lot and he's been uh, really enriching our uh, bariatric surgery literature with a lot of publications coming from, uh, from India. Um, Dr. Bandari. Good evening, everybody. At the outset, I would like to thank Harris Khwaja and Ariel Ortiz for giving me this great opportunity to speak at this uh, IBC webinar on different new innovative staplers. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the anatomy of the Lunar F stapler uh, by Feng Surgical. Uh, I'm based out of India and Indra and we run this uh, one of the highest volume centers of Asia here, bariatric metabolic surgery and bariatric endoscopy. I represent Mohawk Bariatric and Robotic Surgery Center and Sri Aurobindo University. Uh, these are my disclosures. Uh, I'm a consultant to all these companies. Uh, uh, I work with uh, Professor Toby, who is the founding president for Bariatric Corporation. And now, recently, uh, Dr. Manuel Galvao has joined our center as director for Bariatric Endoscopy uh, Services. Uh, we have done close to 16,000 bariatric procedures and you can see that our experience uh, is demonstrating that we have done equal number of sleeves, gastric bypasses, one anastomosis gastric bypasses, endoscopic sleeves, swallow balloons and several other procedures. Uh, if we talk about our experience with Lunar F staplers, uh, since six months we have been using it and we are extremely satisfied. Uh, we have done close to 221 sleeve gastrectomies, close to 100 gastric bypasses and around 212 OI gastric bypasses. Uh, pardon me, 212 one anastomosis gastric bypasses uh, and around 100 OI gastric bypasses, uh, close to 600 cases. Uh, what we realized that there was no significant difference which was observed in mean total hospital costs, length of stay, operating room time, incidence proportion of all costs patient readmission rate within 30, 60, and 90 days post-discharge, which means that if we compare Lunar F staplers to all other existing staplers, the results are pretty much the same. Uh, Lunar F staplers are new generation staplers and they have in intelligent endoscopic technology. Uh, they are approved by FDA and there are more than 300 cases multi-central trial study which has been done in China. Uh, so this is the anatomy of the Lunar F stapler. As you can see, there's articulating joint uh, between the main 
stem and the anvil jaw. Uh, the cartridges are reloadable cartridges with a hard tip. Uh, just like any other power strip, uh, you have uh, you know uh, integrated multifunction button and a compression timer safety lock. So this is no different than any other powered stapler, but the beauty of this stapler is that it's very simple to use. Uh, it's not a complicated powered stapler like others. Uh, it's based on a 15 second smart pre-compression, so which offers you flexibility for different compressions, needs or preferences, and that assists in hemostasis. At the same time, the advanced jaw design is very, very characteristic of Lunar F staplers. Uh, this prevents uh, a lot of slippage uh, which is there in uh, other endo GI staplers which is not there with the fence surgery. At the same time, uh, the anatomy of Luna F stapler is based in a way that the uniform compression reduce, reduces the chances of tissue blasting damage caused by manual jaw closing operations due to changing grip forces. It's a very uniform uh, grip uh, which assists in hemostasis and avoids slippage of the tissue. The zip up zip down function is to reduce the occurrence of blade jam and that, that's what we see in some powered staplers uh, uh, and, and this is basically uh, uh, much helpful for the surgeon because then uh, we are not expecting a misfire. Uh, it triggers a buzzing sound to signal and it's ready to fire without looking at the timer. So uh, it's you know it's, it's mostly auto set. Uh, it has a 45 degree articulation like many other powered staplers. It's very easy, so you can go 45 degree both the ways. And the beauty is that you have an external control, which is this, to assist in 45 degree articulation. Obviously, an all electric operation with the jaw and a multifunction button for control of jaw opening is something, obviously opening and closing is something which is very, very nice feature in the Lunar F staplers. And I think all of these assist in simplicity. The flex flexibility and easy operation adaptability to both left and right handed side surgeon is there in the Lunar F staplers. Uh, at the same time, we have a manual override. Now, this manual override is a safety mechanism for better clinical maneuverability. So, no need to worry if the battery gets discharged and all those things. Uh, so, this is uh, one of the videos where I'm using uh, uh, the Lunar F stapler. It's pretty smooth. As you can see, uh, uh, we are facing no difficulties. Uh, and the, the beautiful part is that uh, it's virtually creating no sound while we are stapling, very hemostatic. Uh, so this is basically the Lunar F stapler. It looks like this and uh, we are doing here a, a mini lap uh, sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, so you can see that the stapler is going inside and uh, I really appreciate uh, the feel, the look and feel of the stapler. Uh, this is a very tough case we did by the stapler, so we know that most of these cases, so you can see the liver here is pretty cirrhotic and uh, uh, we expect some sort of a bleeding here. Uh, so after mobilization, we were scared, uh, you know, that it could bleed. But you see, this is a nice uh, stapling uh, done by the uh, lunar stapler and, you know, uh, obviously this patient did pretty well. Very uniform staple line, a good B formation. Absolutely no slippage of the stapler and you know one of the most wonderful technologies and we could just do the hemostasis with some clips applied. Similarly, we did a couple of laparoscopic sleeve bipartition with this procedure. I'm just showing uh, two videos here so that you know you can understand how we perform these procedures. So first uh, we did a gastrogenostomy and then once this gastrogenostomy is done with the stomach, we sort of try and uh, create a sleeve. Uh, and then the sleeve is fired with the Lunar F stapler by Feng Surgical. So you see it's a beautiful line all across. Absolutely no need to, you know, bother about hemostasis. And then we, uh, obviously, we close this uh, uh, anastomosis uh, by a vicryl suture. So at the end, it looks pretty nice. I'll show you the final anatomy. I'm not going to, you know. So that's the final anatomy. And you can see that the line looks clean and good. Some clips may be applied, obviously, which is there with any other staplers, but no need to suture the lines and all these things. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would just conclude by saying that, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Phoebe taught me that we should always give chance to innovative technology. Uh, we should be open to innovation, give chance to new companies, learn about them. But the most important thing is that these operations which we do or perform should always be recorded in our prospective database 
And that prospectively maintained database should be very objective when somebody is doing the assessment. So same thing we are doing here with Feng Surgical. We have, as I said, we have done close to 600 cases. Uh, we have documented each and every case in our prospectively maintained database with a lot of details. And that's the conclusion which we have drawn that these are as good as any other platform of staplers available internationally and globally. And uh, we are very satisfied and 600 cases is not a small number. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce you to this new technology. And I hope that uh, we all embrace newer technologies, but at the same time, we keep our data and then we change our clinical practices based on the conclusion from our data. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Please go ahead. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, all the IBC staff, Iris, and of course, Ariel and Gloria. And thank you so much to my good friend, Dr. Ganem, for his kind of and friendly introduction. Well, um, so happy to see so many friends from Mexico, United States, Hong Kong, and Brazil. So, well, uh, my, my question for Mohit is, is a little bit provocative. Um, I've, I've seen in your introduction that while, uh, well, I'm, I'm not very experienced with, with this, my, my disclosure, I'm not very experienced with this, with this stapler, but I had the chance to see the introduction of the, the stapler in, in Madrid in 2019 do, during the mm -hmm. uh, World Congress. And um, well, my question for Mohit is, you showed us there is no difference uh, in, in terms of total cost, in terms of uh, hospital length stay, in terms of, well, complication, post-op complication. So why should I change my attitude and start to use these staplers? Uh, so uh, a very good question. So you, you, you got the right point. Now the issue is that the total cost to hospital mm -hmm. uh, is a factor which is dependent on a lot of insurance-based reimbursement in our country. So we may be reimbursed the same amount, but if suppose it's out of pocket, the cost using Feng Surgical is lesser as compared to other available staples. Uh, and they are, I think, at least 30 to 40% much reasonable as compared to other staples. Uh, but at the same time, they deliver the same amount of uh, uh, results in terms of the morbidity or the leaks or the bleeds as compared to other existing staplers. So, uh, I think it makes your bariatric program much reasonable if you have out-of-pocket patients who are not covered by insurance. Uh, for insurance patients, it's the it's, it's same because it's not a lot of difference. Yeah. So we can say they are cost-effective. They are very cost-effective. Uh, plus, they have the same rate of leaks, bleeds, and mortality, morbidity, whatever you call. I mean, absolutely same as compared to the existing other brands. So I would say that... Uh, Previously, the newer staplers from uh, several other innovations were not uh, 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 as good in terms of their research and development as these ones are. So I, I, but I've, I've done 600 cases now. I can say that yeah, they, they are very cost effective. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I have a question uh, for you, Mohit. Uh, first, yeah. I have no conflict of interest with any of the companies or staplers. Uh, so all my questions are genuinely for pure educational um, um, matters. So mm -hmm. my question is, uh, we saw different heights. Are there any heights, uh, stapler heights that are available that are different from what is on the market? That's number one. Uh, and uh, two, if you can tell us, for example, for a sleep gastrectomy, for whoever is watching and wants to adopt this uh, stapler, what kind of stapler heights you use uh, from the ones you showed on a sleep gastrectomy, again, as an example. Uh, the, the last question would be, uh, we saw that there is some bleeding, which happens with many staplers, but other staplers do have um, buttress, uh, buttressing ability. Either they have with preloaded or you can even adjust them to have it. Does this stapler have that option? Thank you. Uh, very, three very good questions. 
So the first answer, the answer to your first question is yes, they have all available heights. They have black, they have green, they have gold, they have blue. So you have everything in, in Feng Surgical. Uh, my personal choice to use a black first, absolutely a black because I do a, a partial entrectomy. I go close to the pylorus, two to 2.5 centimeters. And that's a very, very thick area of the stomach. So I do a partial entrectomy. So my first would be a black, then a green. And then I would go all the way up to the blue. Uh, I very rarely use the gold, very rarely nowadays. So that's my choice for a sleeve. For a gastric bypass, it would be all blue. And for a mini gastric bypass, a black or a green first and then blue, all the other. So th this, this is my choice and you will be happy with this choice if you use a Feng Surgical, that's my experience. Now, if you talk about the buttressing material, I have not used a buttressing material with the Feng Surgical. I have not used buttressing material even with j, &J or Covidian or Medtronic, what do you say? We, uh, uh, we are very simple. We don't believe in that. We just use clips to do hemostasis of a suture line. Uh, very rarely we use uh, a complete through, uh, through staple line suturing to do hemostasis if there is a lot of bleeding, uh, but we have very rarely used any of these buttressing materials. So I have no experience with that. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm going to move next to uh, Professor Almin Ramos, also another giant in bariatric surgery and uh, past president of IFSO 2018-2019. He's also the past president of the Brazilian Society of Bariatric and Metabolic Surgery and the general director of Clinica Gastro Obiso Center, Sao Paulo, Brazil. His uh, talk would be what are the benefits of the lunar F stapler and the revision and bariatric surgery. Looking forward to seeing the videos and to follow with the questions. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, guys. Uh, for me here in, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, it is the afternoon. So it's uh, my pleasure to see you again. Thank you, Omar, for your kind introduction. I'm very happy to see a lot of friends here. I hope to see you in person. Uh, uh, soon, and that's a very uh, nice discussion because I think that this is the chance to discuss something that's very important uh, in bariatric surgery, that is the science of stapling. Uh, so let's see, uh, after this wonderful talk of uh, uh, my friend Mohit, uh, what we can do uh, with lunar F in revisional bariatric surgery. Every time I talk with a staple, I'd like to, to show uh, this very short uh, video that I did when I was a ISO president in a visit to Greece. So this is the very old models of a stapler. As you can see, that's very heavy, it's all metallic. And the cartridge, it is itself in the stapler. So before doing the, before firing the stapler, the surgeon should put a staple by staple in the cartridge. This is the way to get compression, you can see. And this is the way to fire the staple. So imagine how much this technology uh, has improved over time. Uh, in order to have the staples that we have right now. And uh, I could see also the question, the comment of Professor Mario Musella uh, about the stapler. And I think that uh, this will depend a lot if, in what kind of stapler technology the surgeon uh, will prefer uh, to use, will trust a lot in the manual or in the electronic, in the new kind of version that we have right now with the Lunar F, that is a new concept of intelligent compression. So uh, in FANG that right now it is Fulbright, we started using the manual version. We progressed to the automatic, the electronic version and with uh, the Lunar F, we are launching the intelligent compression. As you can see, as uh, Mohit also said, we have all the different 
uh, heights of staple and the different colors here uh, with uh, anti uh, uh, slipping technology and in 45 and, and 60 uh, milliliters. So this uh, will depend on the preference of uh, the surgeon. The staple, it is CE and FDA approved with a multicenter study. And as you can see, we don't have uh, bariatric cases in, in this study. Uh, they uh, had studied thoracic surgeries and colorectal with a bleed rating of 06, very, very low. And uh, we can see here some places where uh, in gold, we have the staple right now. Another one that we just launched in, in Brazil, we just launched in Chile and in some countries in Latin America. So also uh, we had uh, Dr. Mohit showing the anatomy of the, the stapler and uh, giving special attention what is more important in this stapler that is the capacity of the surgeon in order to control the compression of the tissue. So uh, in, in my 22 years of experience right now with bariatric surgery, I uh, right now I believe a lot in automatic electronic staple technology. I feel this is better than the manual. It's a little better. Uh, and also, I believe a lot in pre-compression. I think that we can have better results with two kinds uh, of different ways of stapling, automatic, electronic, and uh, using the pre-compression uh, concept that we, we have in, in FANG and in, in Fulbright right now. So to have an adequate pre-compression time, I think that is very important in order to improve the results of our surgery. And this is the mechanism of the lunar F. So we have visual sign and we have also, we can hear the beep of the instrument in order to show to the surgeon that we uh, had the adequate uh, time of compression of the tissue. But also, I think that uh, another important tool is something that the engineers of Fulbright, they have worked a lot in order to have a better technology of staplering. And one of these concepts, it is to have a better steel uh, with more resistance, with more capacity of compression and with no deformation over time when we close the staple. So this kind of technology that allow us to have better pre-compression and strong pre-compression, it is something related to the way they can uh, have the steel to construct uh, the jaw, uh, the, the anvil of the instrument. That is a specific technology to have an adequate steel, very strong, very resistant, that we call this code extrusion reading technology. And this will allow us in uh, lunar F uh, staplering to have what we call sequential compression. So what is sequential compression? At first, we will have the, when we close the instrument, we will have the first compression. And at second, this compression will be then will be improved with the sequential compression when we close the instrument. So th th that's what we call sequential compression. So we can have here, we have the jaw of the instrument. So at first, the, the system that will close the instrument that is automatic is not depending on the, the hands of how strong it is the surgeon. And this will allow uh, 
uh, women to do bariatric surgery very, very easily. And so with this, and uh, let's see here, when we close, it is very important to have a very homogeneous compression of the tissue here. And also the instrument, the closing of the instrument is calculating to have the same pressure here that we can have here in the tip of the instrument. So out of these tools, to have adequate compression, to have an homogeneous and uniform compression will allow us to have a better compression of the tissue. Uh, again, here is the velocity of, of closing that will allow to close the system without damage the tissue. That, that's very important. The adequate grade of articulation, it is important also. And how the control in the technology of just one uh, button. So let's see uh, the lunar F in, in action. And this is a surgery that we have done in our training center of Fulbright in, in Mexico. Uh, very soon you have the presentation of Dr. Ortiz. And uh, this is a surgery done in uh, Baja California Hospital in Tijuana with Dr. Ortiz. So you can see the rotation of the, the instrument, how we can articulate. And the technology of uh, the just one button in order to control how the instrument with just one button and uh, also the capacity to control the pre-compression time. So here we will open in, in, in the button. Once we close, we can activate the red button to have the adequate compression time. So this will be a visual and also we can hear the beep of the instrument when uh, we complete the four lights here. And so we have 15 seconds of compression. So uh, in this moment, uh, Lunar F, it is ready to be fired. So it's, we can see ready and uh, we can go. The system of uh, articulation, it is very wide. It is very easy uh, doing that. And uh, I think that it's important to talk also about the ergonomics of the instrument, allowing uh, doing, uh, sometimes we have five, six surgeries in a day. So doing this with manual stepper will be not easy for the surgeon and for sure over time, we can have some uh, hand lesions. So this is, uh, so the firing of the Lunar F, you can see one uh, gold cartridge. We are progressing now in, in the sleeve gastrectomy. This, this is not a revision of surgery. We will saw the revision right now. This is a blue one. And uh, we are <coughs> progressing and we'll finish the, the surgery right now with the last one. So you can see a perfect staple line with uh, no bleeding uh, here. Okay. Now let's see, because we are in a revision of surgery. So you can see that's a band that we are preparing the conversion to a Ruinai gastric bypass. So we are using the, the hook here to dissection and we have to be prepared for some different problems in revision of surgery as bleeding like you have here. So we have to control the bleeding. You can see that this, this is not a, a big vessel, but regarding the pressure in the middle of the band, we can have some difficulty in, in controlling the, the bleeding. So this is to show you the kind of tissue that we are working when we are doing revision of surgery. Look, we, we continue in the same patient. Now we are removing the scars of, of the band. And uh, even removing this, you can see that the tissue, uh, we have a different thickness. We have much more fibrosis. It is a different tissue 
to uh, work with. And uh, that's the reason that in revisional surgery, we can have much more complication when we compare with the primary one. In revisional, we can have more bleeding, we can have more leaks, we can have longer times of procedures, we can have uh, more chance to have complications. So the better stepper technology then we can offer here uh, will be much better in order to improve our results with our patients. So again, considering that this is the worst uh, kind of service for us as bariatric uh, surgeons, because these are uh, the most different or, or difficult patients to work with uh, in terms of these patients are regaining weight, they are vomiting, they are have problems uh, with the surgery. And also this is uh, the uh, patients where we will have more problems with the thickness, the inflammation, the fibrosis of the tissue. And this, this will increase the necessity to have a good pre-compression time, to have a good closing of the staples, to uh, have a perfect uh, formation in, in the staples after uh, the procedure. So let me show you another video. This is a, one of the tests with the Lunar F. You can see here that we have uh, seven layers of the tissue. Look how big is this tissue. And let, let's see what kind of result we can have with the Lunar F. So it's ready to be fired. Seven layers of tissue. That will be about, this is one and a half uh, centimeters of thickness. And you can see that we can have with Lunar F, even uh, with this kind of thickness with seven layers of tissue, as we can have a perfect closing uh, of the staples and a perfect compression of the tissue. So in this kind of situation, we need a very uh, a good compression in order to reduce the, uh, the, the, the tissue to remove the liquid uh, in, inside the tissue in order to uh, facilitate the closing of the staples. So again, this is a, another surgery in uh, FAMIS Academy in, in Tijuana, Mexico. So this is a revision of surgery done by Dr. Ortiz. This is a conversion from sleeve gastrectomy to uh, Ruanai gastric bypass. You can see that the, the thickness of the tissue, the grade of inflammation, the grade of fibrosis, it is different. So uh, we are here preparing to use the staple. This is uh, again, the lunar F. We are preparing, looking for the best uh, articulation of, of the stapler. Uh, using here, regarding the thickness of the tissue, uh, using a black cartridge. This is a revision now of uh, a sleeve gastrectomy with very, very uh, thick stomach. It's important a very systematic closure here. And uh, here we can have the difference in between to close by hand, it to have automatically closure of the staple because the automatically closure will be much more uh, uniform, much more homogeneous. And now we are waiting after closing the staple, we are waiting uh, to complete the waiting time for to have the best uh, pre-compression as possible. And after that, we can fire. So look how much compression we can see that the, 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 the stapler go inside the tissue, reducing the thickness of the tissue 
in order to allow a perfect stapling. And look that we are using here black cartridge. And now we can finish with a, a blue one. Again, closing, waiting the pre-compression time and, and firing. So uh, as a summary of this presentation, I think that Lunar F, it is a new generation of uh, electronic automatic staple that is uh, launching a different kind of uh, compression, what we call intelligent compression. Again, I have to say that this will depend if US surgeon will believe in automatic electronic staple that it's better than manual and also will believe in the concept of pre-compression. As I have been working with this for uh, 10 years, uh, it's pretty clear to me that we can have better result with automatic electronic staple and with the adequate kind of compression. Uh, thank you very much again for the chance to participate in this uh, discussion was a great pleasure to uh, be here with you again. Let me interrupt my sharing. Thank you, Dr. Almino. Uh, it was a pleasure hearing you. Uh, I want to ask you a question. We know that uh, you have a lot of experience with different staplers. This extra normally with other uh, types of, or brands of staplers, we do the same thing. We we make a, a, a little time before we fire, right? Uh, yes. From your experience, we have this feeling, you know. Um, you think this is. A difference with this new stapler? I think, uh, Lisa, and, and thank you for your comment, that uh, the Lunar F has something different when we compare with other staples. That is very important, uh, in my point of view, in two uh, different situations. The first one, in doing a sleep gastrectomy especially if you think, as I think, that is very important to go uh, as closest as possible with the pylorus. So we will face a very, uh, a, a tissue uh, with a lot of thickness, very thick tissue that is the antrum very close with the pylorus. And also when we are facing uh, the thickness of the tissue with fibrosis and inflammation that is pretty normal in revision of surgery. Lunar F has a engine, a motor that is 20% uh, with more power. It is powerful than the regular staples that we can compare. So the engine, the motor of the, the Lunar F, it is stronger and can uh, face this kind of tissue uh, without any kind of difficulty. So we can overcome. I have some problems in the past using uh, electronic staples or uh, even manual staples that we cannot fire in the antrum because the antrum, it is very, very thick and uh, will just interrupt the, the action of the staple. We cannot move with the staple regarding the thickness of the tissue. So that's the reason that Fulbright did the Lunar F staple with 20% uh, more potency, uh, powerful in the engine. Perfect. Almino, ¿cómo está mi amigo? Hey, hello. Muy bien, ¿y tú? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Great, great slides, uh, great slides, great presentation. So we're all doing more uh, revisional surgery. And uh, as everybody knows, and you very elegantly uh, showed, uh, demonstrated in your presentation, 
you are going to encounter uh, modified anatomy, uh, much more scar tissue, uh, previous surgical material like uh, the previous staple line, plus additional materials that are used in surgery, like a lot of people use a lot of these uh, larger clips and staple all, all across the, the um the staple line. So do you find that this new technology is actually helping you create shortcuts and avoid, let's say, removing the foreign material or removing the uh, fibro uh, fibrosis around the previous surgical procedure? Or, or are these standards that are going to stay and uh, basically the new technology is gonna offer something additional different than that. Great, great question. And, and thank you, uh, Ariel, for your, your moderation of this session and your uh, comments and also your friendship. So these are very important aspects. And I think that we should analyze in two uh, ways. Uh, I think that uh, all the companies are doing very good staples and are the companies are working hard in order to offer to uh, 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 we as surgeons the best technology and the safer technology for our patients. And no doubt that we have much better staples than we used to have 10 years ago. And I hope in that in five years, we can have better and better uh, uh, technologies uh, from the staples that can look uh, for the tissue and interpret it with uh, what kind of closing of the staples will be better. So what, what I can see for the future of the stapling is that uh, the stapler will be more intelligent than the surgeon because the stapler will decide how to close the staple. So we have an universal kind of cartridge, no more colors, and the stapler will decide about how uh, safer will be to close with 0 0.5 or 1.5. This will depend on how the staple reads uh, the tissue. But what we have right now is uh, different kinds of staples, and I think that all of them are good, all of them are safer. But what I uh, really like in this new kind of technology of, of uh, uh, Fulbright with the Lunar F, it is that we can have better pre-compression with the sequential compression. And uh, the motor of the staple is stronger. So uh, we can really... Uh, uh, go in very uh, thick tissues without any kind of difficulty. And as you said, we have some proline sutures inside the stomach. We have patients that uh, they did endoscopic gastroplasty. So we have to do a gastric bypass or a sleep gastrectomy in this kind of patients. And this is a strong suture, the, the proline. And, but I, I think that no one uh, staple will be stronger enough to cut a clip. So I think that we, we continue to have problems with some, some different materials that we can uh, found uh, inside the stomach, so in the tissues that we are operating. But also, I think that, that we have to look for this kind of technology in the way of the patient to, to have a safer procedure, a faster procedure for the patient with less bleeding, with less leak, uh, with the, the surgeon uh, have the chance to do a quicker procedure. But also we have to think, especially about that kind of surgeon that is doing four, six, eight procedures a day. So imagine to close uh, every, fire that you, you, you uh, do to close and to, to fire in three steps as we have in the manual. I think that ever uh, after 10 years of working, probably we will have some problems in the hands. I'm very happy that my, my hands are pretty nice and I can continue working with no problem. 
this is one of the reasons that robotic uh, technology is evolving in bariatric surgery, is that to save a lifetime for the surgeons. Perfect. Thank, thank, thank you again you, for your Ramos. comment. Thank you, Professor Ramos. We go to Professor uh, Mosella back uh, to Italy. Yes, yes, yes. Well, um, I am hearing very interesting things, uh, two very interesting presentations from Dr. Bandari and Dr. Ramos. Well, it's now my pleasure to introduce you Dr. Elias Ortiz. He is uh, uh, from the Elias Ortiz and Company that is a bariatric surgical group based in Tijuana, Mexico. And well, we have the pleasure to meet, to meet, his, to meet us each month at the FEMIS Academy. I am a proud member among the teachers of this academy. So please, Dr. Ortiz, welcome. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rosella, for your presentation. And hello, friends. I would like to thank also uh, to all the people from IBC for inviting me this day for this webinar, OK? OK. Can you, can you see the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay, well, uh, my, my presentation of today, uh, we're gonna divide it in two, the FAMIS Academy and the importance of staple training to ensure safe surgery, right? Conflict of interest, well, I have no conflict of interest uh, today. The context, what is FAMIS, uh, the FAMIS Academy? Well, uh, by the way, FAMIS uh, TJ is the first surgical training center of Fulbright in all the world. And number two, what training programs do we offer? Number three, how, how important is training? Number four, what's the learning curve that we try to uh, explain to our fellows? And number five, the staple training, right? What is FAMIS? Well, it's a bariatric academy created in Tijuana in 2020 in order to provide educational courses to future bariatric surgeons around the world and for all bariatric surgeons who want to improve knowledge and skill, right? Our vision and mission, well, uh, is to provide knowledge with surgeons who master this surgical practice. As you can see here, uh, all our courses, uh, it's a very complete course. Uh, we have in-person and online classes with worldwide experts like as yourself, doctor. Uh, every fellow has to complete daily a two-hour session in the simulator to improve surgical skills. And uh, after that, they have the opportunity to participate in 10 to 15 surgeries a day. Actually, they have, they have the opportunity to go inside with the OR with Dr. Avino Ramos uh, in 30 surgeries, right? So that's a lot. Our FAMIS timeline uh, from the 2020 look, this is how we started in 2020. We only had four courses in person uh, in 2020, but this year we're going to finish with eight courses. And I'm proud uh, to announce that in 2022, we are going to start our first one year high speciality course. We are fortunate to have all the certifications needed for this one year course. And also we are very, very lucky to have the support of all the heavyweights, right? Uh, Dr. Uh, Sergio Verbone, Musela, Galvao, Carvajo, Joseph Vidal, Antonio Torres, yourself, Dr. Almino, so very happy for this. The fellows that we are receiving in this moment are practically all from the area of uh, Ipsolac, but uh, we hope that we expand in the future, right? Just in this year, this is uh, the gang of eight, right? Uh, all the surgeons that we participate in this course uh, with live presential surgeries, right? Uh, in the seven years, seven courses that we have until this moment, we almost done, well, uh, like 1000 procedures uh, every month between the eight of us. Obviously that all the, the fellows, they can only participate in a few like, but at the end of one month, it's guaranteed that at least they 
go inside of 150 surgeries. So they're gonna learn about stapling, that's for sure. In my case, well, just numbers, uh, but well. So in resume, we can see our, the family's growth in this two years. We have received 114 fellows, almost 10,000 procedures performed in this, in, in this two years and 22 uh, professors, right? And 12 courses until this moment. Why is important bariatric surgery training? Well, we always encourage our fellows to continue surgical practice. And like we all know, practice make perfect, right? The learning curve. This is how the learning curve of stapling goes. This is how it goes. Novice and the novice fellow, well, we try to instruct them to reduce the staple line, staple time, and creating the sleeve or the pouch. A fellow who has proficiency, well, uh, to reduce the complication rate. An expert learn how to staple in revision surgeries and a master, right? When we have a staple complication and know exactly what to do. And if you we check the literature, it will uh, be very, uh, the gap, it's a very wide range. It says that to be a competent stapling in an RNY procedure, you need 30 procedures. But in order for you to be a master, you need uh, 500 uh, procedures as a primary uh, surgeon. So we always uh, focus this to our fellows and tell them never, never to go uh, to do surgeries with somebody on the side that knows a lot about this, right? And competent to do gastric sleeve surgery? Well, you need 75 procedures to be a competent in stapling and 100, some liter literature says uh, 200 procedures uh, to be a master in stapling and gastric sleeve surgery, right? I agree with this Dr. Vilmeyerka uh, that who points out that it doesn't matter how many years you have been in bariatric field, it is more important the value, right? Complications, this is very important. We always try to make sure to our fellow surgeons uh, in their courses to understand that they always have to be in between and within, within this range of complications, because if not, the staple technique is just wrong. This is a small video, uh, but well, we're gonna skip it because I think that Dr. Almino already embraced very well uh, the use of the lunar F stapler. Some factors that involve with the development of complications can be avoided by the surgery. I agree with the part where it says technical error. Uh, staple mal malfunctioning is related with the lack of training. How to deal or solve the problem is related with the experience. I heard a lot of surgeons and I include myself every time at the beginning when I, when I have a problem with the, the stapler, the dysfunction or get locked, locked uh, I always uh, thought that it was the fault of the fabric. But the reality in, uh, is that I accept that every time that you have a problem with the stapler, I think that it's more a human error. So, uh, because it's, it's just a mistake in the technique of the stapling. Uh, and I'm gonna explain a few examples in a few moments. Technical errors. Why stapling complications occur? Number one, inappropriate choices of staple size and in relation to gastric wall thickness. For example, uh, and Dr. Almino already explained a little bit about this, we encourage always to our fellows to always use a black or green cartridge in the antrum, right? Never, in the case of we're talking about the sleeve, never start more than five centimeters from the pillars. We know that the antrum, it's very thick. So it is a mistake to use a color that is not black or green on this part. Green always 
and the, and the level of the incisura, and then yellow and then blue, the last two will be blue cartridge, right? Inadequate time of pre-compression. I also agree with this one. Uh, with the new lunar staple, uh, you're not gonna have this problem because as Dr. Almino already uh, mentioned, the lunar F stapler doesn't let you fire before those 15 seconds. But it is a quite a mistake with the previous uh, power staples and the manual that some surgeons and probably I include myself at the beginning, we didn't did this time of pre-compression, right? At the moment of the clamping, we just fire. And that it's also a mistake that can leave a mistake that if you don't uh, did it, do this pre-compression, you can have problems with your stapler. So that is another uh, reason that how you why your stapling uh, can be inadequate, right? Or even you can uh, lock your staple by not doing this pre-compression time. Inappropriate pressure of the fire staple. Again, this problem you see, you saw it more with the manual uh, staplers. Why? Because with the manual staplers, you have to pull all the way down, all the way in the back with a lot of, a, a lot of uh, power. And the, the four fires are, have to be the same power. Otherwise you can lock the, the, the stapler. Uh, many times when we give the opportunity to our fellows, uh, surgeries in the course to fire, this is the problem that they have. They don't wait those five seconds and they fire and I see them that they locked their stapler or when they fire uh, because of the lack of experience, they don't uh, pull the stapler all the way uh, to the back. That is another reason that the stapler can uh, malfunction, right? But you don't have, we're not gonna have this problem with the power staple. That is why I prefer to use always the electric one because the compression is always unique. It's always homogeneous, right? You're not gonna have this problem. But what happened if the stapler stucks or locks? Well, uh, what to do next? It's practically a, many times, it's a nightmare, right? Uh, we have two scenarios here. I believe that in Europe and the US, uh, surgeons tend to use more a bougie of 40 French or probably a little bit bigger. That's not our case here in Tijuana. We use more a 32 or a 36 French bougie. But let's say that you're using a 40 French, 40 French uh, or bigger bougie and your stapler by any cost, by any reason it gets locked. What are your options? Like it says here, uh, you can see the video, how this surgeon, he had a malfunction of his stapler, right? It's stuck. It cannot take it out. So one option can be change your, your bougie. If you're using a 40 bougie or more uh, or bigger, change it to another one smaller, a 32 or 36 French bougie. And you can just fire, um, another staple on the inside of the previous one. That is one option that we teach our fellow uh, surgeons, right? But like I said, this is not our case. My, our case, it's more uh, like this one. Here, you can see this surgeon doing a gastric sleeve surgery and his land, landmarks are the vessels from the lesser curvature. That's the way how we do the gastric sleep surgery here, by the way. But what happened if after fire, you see this? Well, you see a lot of bleeding and you see practically a hole in the sleep, right? You can almost hear the surgery cry, starting to cry, right? It's a nightmare here. So what's next? The another other option that we teach our fellow surgeons, it's in my case, Thank God, it only happened like six times in this nine years that I've been doing surgeries. And I always repair like this two lines because I don't have uh, space enough to put another stapler 
like the previous example. So I always do uh, one or two lines of row of, of suturing, right? And uh, I hope that this never happens to you guys because if you think that you're gonna leave uh, stenosis, well, you have to change to an RNY bypass and that's a different uh, ball game, right? Okay, well, for your attention, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Ortez. Interesting videos. Um, I have a question myself uh, before we go to uh, um, Ariel. You stressed the concept of compression, same did Professor Elmino Ramos. Um, I am guilty. I never compressed a metronic. I use metronic uh, stapler. Again, no conflict of interest. But um, I'm, I've never compressed them, never had a staple line dehiscence like the one you showed. Um, and um, never taken a patient knock on wood back for staple line bleed, neither in a bypass nor a sleeve for the past five years and a half. So is it, I know that J&J &J stresses the fact of that you need to compress. And now we are seeing that the Luna, Luna stapler does it automatically. You don't have a choice, but is this truly a um, staple specific feature or requirement, or is it really a mandate among all staples? Well, in the, the case that you're mentioned for Medtronic, uh, I, I don't use, I do not use Medtronic, but in the case that you're mentioned, I believe that you don't have to do the pre-compression uh, time with Medtronic. But if you're using Johnson Johnson or Fulbright, it, you have to do it. You have to do it. And this new power stable, if like you said, it doesn't even give you a chance to fire before those 15 seconds, you can, you just cannot. Uh, so in our course that we're having, uh, we are always, always tell our fellow surgeons to always do the compression uh, time if they're gonna use uh, the stapler, not the tronic one. Um, Professor Ayel, any oh, questions oh, before? Omar, Omar yes, can I, I do a comment? Yes, I was waiting for you. <laughs> yes, thank I you. I knew that there was something coming up, yes. Thank you. So, oh. sorry, sorry yeah. about to interrupt your discussion, but... No, no, at all. I, I promise I was waiting because you... I saw it in your eyes that you wanted to say yes. something about the pre-compression. I, yeah. I think that the system of Medtronic is pretty good also, but remember that. Remember, I don't know. I, I think that you are using Signia right now, no? Currently, yes. Yes, remember the old version of EndoGIA, EndoGIA? So in EndoGIA, you use the concept of post-compression. The stapler, you, you, you remember that you cannot grasp the, the, the tissue with that kind of staple because there is no enough um, force in the tip of the stapler to handle with the tissue because the concept was post-compression. But you think that Medtronic with the new version of Signia changed the, compress the, the compression system and started using what we call sequential compression. So when you fire Signia, the first thing you can see, you can hear something like this. Zzzz. That is the, the stepper uh, compressing, doing the compression of the tissue. And after that, in, in two or three seconds, start to stapling. So uh, Medtronic now it's using uh, the, the same concept of pre-compression, but in a different way, there is sequential compression. So we have the pre-compression and the compression when you close the staple. That is something very similar with the concept that we are using now also in Lunar F project. They are, they are both very similar. And uh, I'm sure that this will increase uh, safety of the staple, decreasing bleeding and decreasing leak. So yeah. pardon to tell you that, yes, yeah. you are using the pre-compression concept, even with Medtronic. That's a great concept. 
Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, really uh, explaining that, uh, Professor Ramos, and uh, truly learning uh, every day myself. I am um, guilty about uh, these technical details, again, that you just mentioned. I know what works for my patients. And again, uh, these questions are not to appraise or uh, downgrade any of the companies we're discussing. I purely have no conflict of interest, and this is purely for the sake of education and patient safety. So thank you. Um, I believe we're going to go to uh, Professor uh, Lisa Gonzalez again. Let me, let me uh, just uh, pose a question, Hi. Hi. Omar. Uh, great presentation, Dr. Elias, and congratulations on, on the uh, uh, training center. So uh, I see that you are uh, growing and then um, actually focusing now on longer uh, courses, a one-year course, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we, all, we all know that uh, now, after so many years of bariatric surgery, uh, a lot of centers are now offering fellowships and formal trainings, like in Mexico, there are actually specialties, two-year specialties, etc. How do you keep a surgeon who's a fellow of a stapling course from actually going all the way and uh, how do you keep them safe? And do you find that they are ill-equipped to go and perform an actual bariatric surgery as we know and understand that it involves much more than just stapling? And is this why you have changed to a longer course? Yeah, uh, thanks for the question, uh, Dr. Ariel. Look, uh, one of the critiques constantly critiques that we had uh, previously is that we were given doing curse curses of uh, one month. Uh, well, uh, that is why we are now trending to evolve to do a course of one year. Uh, and like I said, I'm probably uh, to announce that we're gonna start in March with seven fellows uh, and we already have all the credentials to start this. But yes, uh, when we have fellows from all over Ipsolac, they come here for one month. They're inside of the OR in 150 or 200 surgeries. But we always let them clear that that's not gonna be enough. That that's not, that they're, just because they're, they help, because they didn't get the surgery, they help in 150 surgeries, that's not, that doesn't make them uh, capable of doing surgeries. And well, but when they go back to their countries, uh, well, they will make the, their own decisions, right? But we, we, we sure let them that clear that they have to constantly be in education, right? And yes, that is because of those kind of critiques, we decided to, be better and move to a one year full uh, fellowship. In this one year, these fellows uh, are gonna be able to see uh, thousands, thousands of surgeries uh, and help. And I'm pretty sure that at the end of this year, year, they will be more than competent to realize uh, surgeries because they participate with eight surgeries and they participate in 10 to 15 surgeries, many times 20 surgeries a day. So imagine that for 360 days. I think that it's gonna be better uh, now that we're moving to one year. It's a very, it's a very ambitious, it's a very ambitious plan that we have. Uh, maybe it will not sound good if I say so, but the idea that we have here in Tijuana is to make it the best fellowship in all the world. And with the help of the professors that we have right now and the volume of surgeries, like you already, like you all well know, Tijuana is the world capital of bariatric surgery. I'm pretty sure that we're gonna achieve that. Thank you. So I have the pleasure to introduce the chair of the expert discussion panel, 
Dr. Francesco Caruso from Italy. Dr. Francesco, he's a consultant in general, minimally invasive and bariatric surgery, Casa di Cura, Tirrenia Hospital, Belvedere Maritimo, Italia. Um, welcome. And then I will introduce the expert discussion panel. First, we have Ian Soriano from the US, uh, recently appointed as MIS and bariatric surgeon at the University of California, San Francisco Medical Center, USA. Former section chief gastrointestinal surgery, Pennsylvania Hospital and uh, Associate Professor of Clinical Surgery, Perelman School of Medicine, University of Pennsylvania Health System, USA. Professor Musa Kurshid of Kuwait, I hope I said that correctly. Professor of Surgery at Kuwait University, Kuwait, Board Vice Chairman, Head of Department Surgery and MIS Division, Taiba Hospital, Kuwait and Dr. Simon Wong of Hong Kong. He's a consultant, upper gastrointestinal and bariatric surgeon at Prince Wales Hospital in Hong Kong, honorary clinical associate professor in the Department of Surgery at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, division head and upper GI surgery team at the deputy chief of service of the Department of Surgery Prince of Wales Hospital, Hong Kong, President of Asia Pacific Metabolic and Bariatric Surgical Society and the Chairman of the Hong Kong Society of Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery. Welcome. And Professor Bruno Sil Silverstein of Brazil, full professor of surgery, head of the gastrointestinal surgery division, Gastromed Silverstein Institute on, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And last but not least, Professor Sergio Verbonen, colleague from Mexico, senior bariatric surgeon on, in Clinica Victoria in Cancun, Mexico, and also Obesity Goodbye Clinic here in Tijuana, Mexico, former president of the College of General Surgeons of Tijuana, Mexico, and president and founder of the Baja California State College of Surgery for Obesity and Metabolic Diseases. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Caruso, do you have any questions for the panel? Yes, hello. hello, everybody. I'm uh, very glad to participate in this wonderful and, and uh, interesting session. Um, I want to uh, to, to speak uh, um, about the uh, the presentation we uh, we see. Uh, I completely uh, agree with uh, Professor Amino Ramos about the Lunar F. It is another kind of instrument. It's not the, um, uh, a classic uh, stapler. Uh, I, I personally uh, tested the Lunar F uh, twice of, uh, on uh, the gastrectomy. And, uh, I don't know if uh, it, it's better, but uh, um, the sensation, the feeling uh, uh, is that there is um, uh, reducing on uh, bleeding and the feeling of the uh, uh, strongest of, uh, of the suture line uh, is uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to make a um, parallel, I think, um, you need to test this this kind of uh, if if you don't test it you don't uh, you we can uh, we can speak about the theory of this uh, of this uh, I see the wonderful presentation of the on the anatomy of the, of the stapler the function of the stapler but I think you need to test this stapler. Is there really a new instrument? There are no instruments like uh, like this. And uh, in this uh, second, I 
Uh, I agree completely with uh, um, Professor Professor uh, Elias Ortiz um, because uh, uh, you you could have experience with uh, um, stapler, but I think the experience is not uh, enough. Uh, never. Uh, so you can uh, have uh, you can add uh, a problem with uh, a stapler uh, after uh, one thousand of uh, gastric or uh, gastric bypass. So uh, teaching uh, how um, use uh, better this kind of instrument, I think, is uh, very important. So Tijuana is a little bit far, so <laughs> I hope <laughs> for, for, uh, for uh, Italian surgeon. I, I hope, uh, the hope is uh, to open, to develop a school uh, like this in Europe, uh, in Europe too. Um, the question, so uh, um, I, I want to turn the, the question of Professor Musella. Uh, Professor Musella uh, asked why we, do you, uh, we use uh, this uh, kind of instrument. My question is uh, why not? Why not we don't uh, use this, uh, this instrument? Uh, Dr. Ganem, if, if, if you if you agree, I can. Uh, I, I don't know if Francesco was was asking. If you to can me. answer this one, and then we will address the panelists that uh, Dr. Gonzalez agrees. The answer is easy. Uh, I am very open-minded with regards to the this this new technology. I've I've no I've no objection, and uh, as far as I as I see this afternoon. I'm I'm willing to try this this stapler. Uh, my my question was simply uh, why to use in respect of what what was uh, Dr. Bandari was commenting to us at the beginning of his presentation, and he told us that basically uh, there were no differences. So, but in any case, why not? Of course, it's is a chance. Is is one more chance we have to to better treat our patients. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Musella. I, I'm going to go to uh, uh, Professor Ian uh, Soyano. Ian, you're, at least to my knowledge, you're one of the few on the panel today who use robotic technology. How do you compare your robotic stapler experience we have seen on social media, uh, the fact that you don't have any tactile sensation? I know that the robot gives you uh, live feedback, but how was your experience transitioning from laparoscopic to robotic experience with the stapler specifically. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone uh, from San Francisco. Thank you for the uh, honor of being part of this very esteemed panel and uh, great to see everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ganem, for that question. So uh, my experience, uh, 14 years, I've actually started with COVID, uh, Ethicon staplers and then transitioned to uh, Medtronic slash Covidian staplers for about six, five years. And then for the last three years, I've been using uh, the robotic stapler. And as uh, Omar mentioned, as everyone knows, there is no tactile feedback uh, with uh, the robotic stapler. So you are relying on the uh, technology that is built in into the robotic stapler to sense the uh, tissue thickness uh, and using that uh, uh, when you're firing. Uh, the other uh, feedback mechanism uh, for the robotic stapler is that it slows down deployment of the uh, blade uh, when it's cutting to, through tissue. Uh, I have certainly experienced what Dr. Uh, Ramos and Dr. Ortiz have mentioned about a staple misfire. Uh, and it's indeed one of the most devastating things that can happen in the middle of a case. And mine happened actually uh, close to the GE junction uh, on my last fire. Fortunately, uh, uh, I learned from uh, Raul Rosenthal, who you all uh, know very well where I did my fellowship uh, 14 years ago. And so I always uh, stay more lateral uh, on the fat pad of the GE junction. And so I had space to fire a second stapler 
as, uh, as was mentioned. Uh, but we are relying on technology. I think that is one of the things that I am also seeing here from this panel is that we are really working, we need to blur, work better with the engineers of this technology in order to be able to engineer what we want in a stapler into the devices. And I think the pre-compression that is now being engineered as a requirement before a staple is fired is very important. Number two, what uh, Dr. Musella mentioned earlier, if you had a stapler that could determine on its own how much to close and form that B staple, I think is also uh, an important piece of technology that might find its way down the road in uh, what we do. Uh, the lack of tactile feedback uh, is made up for by visual feedback and also by the sound that you hear. Uh, what I found interesting recently uh, when uh, Dr. Ramos, I think, uh, I don't know, Dr. Ortiz or Dr. Ramos spoke about using only black or green for the uh, 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 first or first two fires is on the robotic uh, bariatric group, a lot of surgeons are now using blue staples for their first two fires. And I think this for me is very, uh, <laughs> to say the word, really, it's, it's, uh, it's very, uh, it challenges uh, the staple for its closure. And so I think this is uh, something I'm not doing. I still use green as my first fire without any buttress. Uh, so, uh, so those are my comments on that. And I, I had one question for, uh, for uh, uh, I, I don't see Dr. Bandari anymore, but maybe Dr. Ramos or Dr. Ortiz can talk about it. We talk about ergonomics. Uh, I, I see that you know, most of the surgeons on this panel are male, uh, except for Dr. Uh, Professor Liza Gonzalez. Uh, I'd like to hear if Dr. Gonzalez, if you had experience of using uh, the stapler itself, uh, but not just the grip. So I'm a member of the Society for Surgical Ergonomics. It's a new society focusing on ergonomics. And it's not just the grip, but actually the thumb mechanism to be able to move uh, the staple left and right, up and down and firing. It seems like it's very high up on, on the anvil itself. And so uh, I'm, I, I, uh, I think it's very important that as we design this, not just engineer it, but also the ergonomics of the grasp and, and the and the twisting mechanisms. Thank you Thank so you, much. Ian. Thank you. Dr. Right. Liza, you want to answer that quickly before we go to the panelists, please? Yes. Uh, well, I uh, have had some experience. I don't use this staple, uh, stapler. Uh, uh, I have used it in some trials. Actually, Dr. Almino, uh, we did uh, sur a live surgery for a Congress uh, some years ago. That was the first time it was used in Tijuana, this, the, the, and it wasn't the lunar stapler. I haven't had the opportunity of using this particular one, but I have tried uh, from the same company, the, uh, the last model that they did, and it's actually pretty similar to uh, Johnson & Johnson's stapler. stapler. Um, it doesn't make a, a real difference to me, part, to me personally. And I, I also do volume surgery. Um, I think from the last one that I used, to the model that uh, Johnson & Johnson produces, uh, I don't see the difference. But maybe when it enters uh, Tijuana and it gets uh, used uh, you know, frequent, frequently, Dr. Arnold is gonna comment on that. Uh, I see his face, but uh, I haven't tried it yet, the lunar, okay? So I, I, my opinion is not, uh, it's not, um, I mean, very valuable because I have I, I don't have the experience with that particular model. Thank you, Doc Dr. Musala. Do you have any questions for the panelists, please? Uh, well, um, I'd like to well I like to remind us that all this discussion we are we are doing now <clears throat> about the compression or pre-compression of the tissues uh, came from a, a very interesting paper that has been published in 2004 in obesity surgery it was from from a US surgeon, his name was Randall Baker. And I remember very, very well this paper, the, the name of the paper, the title of the article was The Science of Stapling and Leaks. It's very interesting. And he explained it as that uh, the background for all this investigation was we have to dehydrate the tissues before firing. At the time, the stapler said, 
two lines or we, we still have not a, a, a tribal line uh, staplers as we do now. Well, and uh, well, I have no specific question about uh, about that for the for the panelists. I'd like to hear uh, their point of view about the presentations we we've heard uh, from Dr. Bandari and from Dr. Ramos. For example, is Professor Kurshid one wants to to make a comment about what we heard? I, I'll 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 be very pleased. Please, please, Professor. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for inviting me. It's an honor for me. Uh, I have a few comments. I wrote them down here. Uh, first of all, we've seen some of the studies looking at uh, gender <clears throat> BMI and the use of uh, stapler and the thickness of the stomach wall at the antrum and uh, the, the fundus and uh, the body. And there are differences in those studies. Uh, there are conflicting reports. When you look at the thickness, so which stapler that we need to use is, has always been uh, a debate and has always been uh, a nightmare for all the surgeons. That is one issue. Uh, now, the other issue is using the manual versus uh, the automated stapler. Uh, no doubt that the automated stapler has got uh, the steadiness of uh, applying it. If you are doing many cases, then uh, you get fatigue at the end of the day. However, I saw no differences in my experience in terms of uh, leak rate and uh, bleeding uh, if you compare the two devices. Uh, uh, we have one issue, of course, uh, I was surprised at the end of, unfortunately, I could not attend Dr. Mohit's uh, talk. However, I heard his comment, and they do, they do not use any reinforcement for the stapler my, uh, line. And, uh, you know, looking back at the literature, I think Scott Chikura have shown very well uh, in a meta-analysis that... Uh, uh, using the reinforcement decreases the bleeding rate and the leak rate, in particular the bleeding. And 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 uh, he has shown that if you are, if you use the period strip is better than over sewing. However, both if you reinforce the staple line, uh, your leak rate and bleeding is less. Now my experience with the finger stapler, I have used it once. And uh, the, the uh, agent of the company told me about everything I read about it, that the bleeding is much less. And I have shown him, not with the lunar, that was the manual. And I have shown him very clearly that the bleeding was much more than any other stapler. And I'm surprised when I saw the video that had been shown by uh, Dr. Alminio. Uh, a friend, uh, good friend of mine, and I know he's very good surgeon as well as Munit. Uh, there is no no single spot of blood. It was very clean, as if that there is no blood coming to the stomach. So this is very impressive. Uh, I'm sure that uh, one of the major issues is cost, and and the cost is important even in rich country like Kuwait, uh, oil producing. However, still people would like to pay less for their surgery. So if we can cost the, reduce the cost of the instruments, that is an advantage that we can have. Provided it provides it provide, uh, the same outcome in terms of leak rate and bleeding. Now, uh, uh, these are the main issues. I have a question for Dr. Almino. And, and my question is that uh, it's not clear, you know, it's automated. We have been always looking for an instrument that can tell us what kind of stapler we use and whether green or blue or whatever mm -hmm. is going to be safe if we fire. And, and uh, my question to him, is this compression and until we reach the fourth light uh, is a, a calculation that uh, is is uh, done by the instrument as 15 seconds, or it would tell us that you need to have another stapler 
because this stapler is not good to fire. Green is not good. You need to have a black, uh, something like that. This was. This was thank, thank you, Dr. Hussain. Briefly, Professor uh, Ramos, if you can answer that question so that we can go to the other panelists as well. We're a bit running out of time. Yes, uh, thank you, Mosa, for this comment. And I, I think a little different. Huh? I think that in the future, we will have an universal care bridge. So there, th that's not a, a gold, that's not a blue, that's not green. It is universal. And by reading the thickness of the tissue, by bioimpedance, uh, the stapler can calculate how much closer the, the, the staple. So I think that this is the future of, of stapling. Uh, a stapler that can read the thickness of, of the tissue, the grade of inflammation, the grade of fibrosis, and decide the best way to close the stapler. We are in a new moment that we have also right now, the 3D uh, closure of a system of the stapler that is very interesting because we always try to work like this, but now they are showing us if we, you keep a 3D, you have a better hemostasis and a better compression of the tissue. So uh, uh, let's see. I think that in this way, uh, robotic surgery right now with the stapler, it is one step uh, forward than, than us with the, the regular stapler. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So I, Go ahead. Oh. I'm sorry, I, I would like uh, Dr. Wong to give his opinion about the talks so we can hear his, his, um, his expertise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, IBC, to invite me for this uh, interesting talk. Uh, and uh, this is uh, one o'clock, uh, half past one in Hong Kong in midnight. So sorry for I'm a bit sleepy. But uh, anyway, I think this is a great uh, argument, just like arguing and uh, Medtronic and J&J, &J, which one is better, you can end it, the un <laughs> have this uh, argument. But uh, at the end of the day, there's the uh, surgeon that feel easy to use the instrument. They are happy with the outcome. And of course, cost, this free thing is judging uh, design which instrument the surgeon would like to use. So um, although it's initially in China, but uh, unfortunately in Hong Kong, we still don't have this uh, staple. So for the easy to use, I would like to ask those um, uh, surgeon Emilio that use that. Uh, for the, for example, now you do not have the clever cartridge at this uh, moment. So I would like to ask when you use black or green staple, do you still need to change the, the um, choker to 15 mm, like the, the J and J uh, uh, one. And also um, in, a, in other uh, brand, when you change the direction of the staple, uh, usually you don't need to use your left hand because your right hand, you either have a button or inside the abdomen, you will use the left hand to push the angle. But this one, I think, you will need to uh, help up your left hand and turn the angle uh, rather than using uh, uh, that need to let go your left hand. So what is your experience on these two aspects? Amir, can you hear me? Dr. Almino, can you answer this question quickly? I, I, I... I think regarding that the connection, I, I missed a little the question. The question is that what do you think of the difference of uh, rotating the stapler with an actual, uh, you know, twist on the top versus uh, twisting it like the Johnson and Johnson one that is a push and you're 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 having to use an extra hand on it. Can you quick, quickly comment? Yes, yes. I, I think that there is. And, and this is a great comment. Uh, uh, there is uh, some problem with registration of the patent of this kind of uh, rotation and articulation because even Johnson is not using this anymore. They change it uh, in, in the new models. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that the best way is when you can do everything with the same hand. 
but I don't know why uh, all the companies they change. Just right now, I think that Medtronic, uh, and th that, that is what makes my friend Omar very happy. Uh, just Medtronic is keeping this kind of system that you can control how the movement of the stapers in automatic way. I think that this is the future, how the staper will migrate for this kind of technology. We can open, close, rotate, and articulate just uh, by pushing buttons. Thank you, uh, Just a small comment. Okay. Metronic still has to improve how bulky that, that mm -hmm. uh, signia is, <coughs> just for the record. So the, I'm sure there is a lot of uh, work that, has be, can, that can be done from all uh, companies as well. Please, Dr. Liza, go ahead. Yes, uh, yeah. I would like to hear Dr. Bruno Silverstein uh, give his opinion about these talks. Can you unmute yourself, please, uh, Professor? Well, thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be with so many experts and so many skillful surgeons in bariatric and digestive and minimally invasive surgery. And I would like to congratulate my friend Harris to organize and to help to organize the IBC. It's a very nice uh, enterprise. Well, what I think is uh, that the world move forward, not backward. And each time more, we have the artificial intelligence to help us to improve our devices. Minimal invasive surgery uh, improved a lot with the harmonic scalpel and other uh, small devices that allows us to perform surgery with minimal aggression and better results. And I don't think also that there is competition between the devices, the, the suturing devices. This is a nice new device. It will help a lot. And it's a movement toward uh, uh, an artificial intelligence to provide us more safety to uh, make suture and to make minimal invasive sutures. I do agree with Domino with his enthusiasm in introducing a new device. But I think for each operation, we have to have better devices. And this is one of them. I think there is place for everybody and we'll look for <coughs> uh, always for new devices. It's a very good one. We had the, the opportunity to use it all, already. Uh, it has some advantages. Other has other advantages. It depends on the operation. There is no one operation. We have a lot of kind of operation, bariatric, pancreatic, hepatic, gastric, esophageal, and other kind of operation. Therefore, <clears throat> we will always need new devices. And with the introducing of the robotic surgery, you, we need automatic devices. This will help us have a lot. And also, it was mentioned in this discussion about the cartridge. Uh, each time more, we are going to use the cartridges applied to the robot. Robot will do our, our uh, stapler. This will be the future of the staplers, the robotic stapler, because it's very slight, it's very easy to move it, and we have to have the safety of using it. Therefore, uh, new devices are very welcome, and I hope that we'll have the opportunity to use it each time more and have good and safety surgeons, uh, surgeries. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. And you, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, Lisa, uh, can I, along with the final commentary that Dr. Verbonen is going to, to give us, okay. I would like to, to ask him a question to my friend Sergio. 
Um, Dr. Verbonen, uh, along with your commentary to what you have heard so far, I would like to know from you, we have heard about these uh, in more and more intelligent staplers. They are able to, to read the thickness of the tissue. And do you believe in the future there will, will be still room for these staple line reinforcements that some surgeons still use today uh, bovine pericardium as, as instance. Do you think there is, we, we're, we have still room for, for these reinforcements or not? Well, that's a very good question. Thank you to everyone to be here. And I am pleasure to talk about in this meeting. Thank you to IBC. Well, and the use of the staple with reinforcement is only by some companies, but I think if you reuse a good staple, you know, is you don't need to use any reinforcement. Just in case that you detect any anything, you can reinforce the line of the staple with as the stitches or with the, uh, continuous stitches. In our personal experience, I have the opportunity to use the lunar staple, and that's it's very easy. I use insignia too, but it's more easy to use the new lunar staple. And I don't think we need reinforcement. Agree, absolutely. So I, I want to ask all panelists, just so we have like a, a poll, uh, who reinforces their sleeve or their gastric uh, uh, stapling? Can you raise your hand, please? OK. Mm -hmm. Dr. Almino also? Okay, so most most yep. of uh, uh, most surgeons reinforce uh, even having the best technology available or where uh, the technology where they feel comfortable, right? So I want to uh, uh, close this session. Uh, it was a great panel. Uh, speaking about staplers is always very interesting. And I think this panel uh, was in these talks were very informative. I want to thank all the participants and I want to hand it over to Professor Ortiz. Ariel, adelante. This has been an IBC Oxford University Hot Topics and Surgery production. I want to thank my co-chair, our moderators, and our distinguished panel of experts for their valuable time and talent today. We want to acknowledge all our partners and sponsors as our global collaboration produces safer and better outcomes. Register to obtain CME credits for this and upcoming events at cine-med.com forward slash IBC 2021. To view the complete Hot Topics and Surgery series, subscribe to our IBC YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms. Mark your calendars as the third IBC Oxford University Congress has been rescheduled to September 19th through the 21 of 2022. For more information, go to ibccongress.org. And now let's view another brief episode of IBC's exclusive Spotlight on Industry and today's sponsor. From IBC Global, stay safe and God bless.